understand we've got uh, a large group of people here. Um, I'd like to start off by just uh, thanking a couple of people. Marina, thank you so much for inviting the YWCA and me to participate in the webinar. And I also would like to really thank uh, the team here, Livio and Megan from the Pro Program Center in downtown Vancouver, and also the team at the YWCA Employment Services Center here at the west side where I work. So thank you so much for inviting me, and, and I hope that this webinar is going to be useful for everybody. So the webinar today, the topic is how to track achievements for career success. Um, just going to go over a couple of goals. Um, Basically, the goals are to develop a new mindset around work and achievements and how, how to uh, actually uh, learn how to track your achievements, but also to develop some habits for tracking and then integrating your work achievements uh, into your life uh, for your future. So the outline for today is an introduction to Dana, that's me, and um, we're also going to go over what an accomplishment actually is and what tracking is and why it's important and what it can do for you. I've got a couple of little quick polls, so I'm hoping to hear in from everybody across the country. Um, we're also going to talk about specific strategies for how to track your accomplishments and the concept of mindfulness and your future. And we're going to close off with some um, a time for you to be able to ask your questions. So as questions comes up, um, come come up, then just write them out, and our moderators will record them. Okay, so let's go on here. So I like to start off by uh, a quote by Lao Tzu: um, "At the center of your being, you have the answer. You know who you are, and you know what you want." I really like this because the concept of mindfulness allows for a certain amount of clarity and allows for decisions about our lives. Um, uh, to be made based on awareness rather than reacting all the time to things that happen to us in this world. So that brings me to me. Ta-da! There I am. Um, so again, my name is Dana Zaruba. I have a master's in counseling psychology. I'm a registered clinical counselor. And I also work for uh, the YWCA and uh, Family Services of Greater Vancouver. I'm a career advisor here at uh, the Work BC Employment Services Center. Um, I'm just starting a private practice, and I do a variety of different things. Also, I'm a writer, I'm an editor, and I'm also an artist. So, you know, I want to bring that up in that, you know, my life has never been a very straight path. There's a lot of people who are like me and they've done a whole variety of different things in their lives. It's, you know, it's very rare actually now for a lot of people to come out of school, they pick a career and they do that for the rest of their lives. You know, we have varied winding paths and bits and pieces. Sometimes we work, sometimes we don't. And it creates essentially a big mosaic that is unique to you, to me. And we all have precious gifts to offer in service of others. So, you know, just as a quick uh, note here, this is a funny sign. Um, I took a picture of this sign in downtown Vancouver, and I thought it was hilarious. I thought, oh, well, yeah, there, there, there's a good illustration from my life here. On the left-hand side is a list of a variety of different things that I've done over my working career. And as you can see, um, you know, I've been a salesperson. I've, I've done creative things. I've been an ESL teacher. I ran my own company. I've written a book, blah, blah, blah. I've done all kinds of different things. And that's just simply to show you that, you know, life is is messy. It's different. Uh, not everybody has one simple straight path, and it can be very difficult if you do have a varied life, or if you're like me and you like to do a lot of different things. How do you connect the threads uh, between all the different things that you've done in your life to present yourself in the present and in the future in a kind of cohesive, clear way? So this brings up to the idea that, yeah, you know what, we're all unique. You know, we've all uh, followed varied paths. And, you know, just today is a perfect example. There's thousands of you listening today, and each of you have to make a number of decisions to decide that you're going to be present here in this moment. So just think about that. Just reach out your mind and realize, you know what, there are thousands of people right here, right at this very second, listening to this webinar. So, you know, when you're looking at the concept of tracking your accomplishments, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. You can choose to be hard on yourself and say, well, you know, I shouldn't have um, done this, I shouldn't have done that, or, you know, I've never really had a career, I've never really had a straight path. I hear this every single day when I am working in the, in the resource room here, and I, 
you know, people come in and say, well, I'm a little embarrassed. I've, I've done all these different things and, you know, I don't really have a career. And that, you know, I, I have an affinity to that simply because it's the way my life has been. And fortunately for me, I've always been a journaler and I've always spent time kind of reassessing and looking at all the different things in, in my life. So I've, I've been able to figure out a way of tracking my life and connecting the threads along the way. So, you know, just remind yourself that, you know, you can choose, you get to pick and you're unique and you get to pick whether you're going to be hard on yourself about having a variety of different life activities and jobs and careers or, and, or you can actually just say, well, you know what, I'm totally unique and that's okay and I get to pick what my successes are in life and nobody else gets to pick that. So exactly, you know, what, what is this achievement thing? What is it exactly? Well, the simple definition would be that it's something that you've successfully done or you achieved or accomplished. It's some kind of special skill or ability you've gained by practice or by training. I'd like to add, too, that there's an emotional side to this, too. It's a sense of personal, internal satisfaction or pleasure. Um, but it's also part of external praise, too, and rewards. We often grow up. Um, gaining value or believing in ourselves because of the things people tell us. So how does this apply to you exactly? I think there's a struggle that we have between internal and external praise, especially in today's world of, of mindfulness and being okay with yourself. We think, well, we shouldn't be looking for external praise, uh, that we should be happy with our own accomplishments. And that's true. Unfortunately, when we are faced with things like job interviews or performance reviews or promotions. Uh, the problem is that a lot of people don't want to talk about their accomplishments and you kind of have to. So unfortunately, why, why don't we? Why don't we want to talk about our accomplishments? Well, I think a lot of times it comes up that people think if they talk about their accomplishments that they are being arrogant and Arrogant means that you actually believe that you are superior to other people, that somehow or another, it's one extreme or the other. You're either totally arrogant by talking about your accomplishments in life. So look at me, I'm so great, I'm so wonderful. And there are a lot of reasons why we don't want to talk about that. There could be you know, contextual reasons, right? There could be cultural gender-based reasons, faith-based reasons. It could be that there are power issues involved. You know, maybe you don't want to be talking about your accomplishments because you're afraid of what other people are going to think of you. Um, on the other end of the scale, uh, there are people who are so modest, they never take, uh, they never take credit for anything that they do. They, they all, you know, try to focus attention away from themselves. And that's just as, I don't know, I mean, I guess I would call it sort of irritating, especially if people really do have a sense that they've accomplished something and there's a certain false modesty along the line. I would say, however, that it's a continuum and that somewhere we fall along in the middle there, sometimes depending on the context or who's involved, sometimes we feel proud of the work that we've done, sometimes we do feel superior, uh, but sometimes, you know, we we are aware of a larger context around us and that we know that our accomplishments are part of a team effort, that there's not just yourself involved in this. I mean, I look at this webinar as a perfect example. I mean, I've had a lot of help along the way. And I think about the team here who are supporting me right now in doing this because they're taking care of the clients in our research room while I'm sitting in my office doing this webinar. So, you know, uh, yes, I feel a sense of accomplishment, but, you know, am I better than others? I don't know why we have to have such an extreme, like it's one or the other. I think we can actually do, uh, we can accomplish things without um, that sense of arrogance or believing that um, we're better than other people. You know, it's important to mention this because like it or not, when you want to work for somebody else or you have your own business, for example, you have clients, if you have your own business, you're serving somebody, you're always going to have to prove your worth in some fashion. Whether it's a deadline or a quota or people's expectations of you, um, there will always be competition for jobs, regardless of whether it's a survival job, career that you have, um, there will be competition for promotions. Um, you might have to justify uh, a raise or maybe you're a program leader, you want to start a project or an initiative of some kind and you need to be able to show what you've done in the past, you need to show that you're confident and you have accomplished things and uh, in order to get funding for a project. 
So essentially, what's the key to this? Well, Lao Tzu says it so well again, you know, accomplish but do not boast, accomplish without show, accomplish without arrogance, accomplish without grabbing, and accomplish well, without forcing. When I look at these, this phrase, I look at this and think of the word boast, show, arrogance, grabbing, and forcing. And all of those things say to me that um, they are external. They're, they're basically all about getting more for yourself. So instead of thinking that, how about shifting your thinking to, well, it's not about you. You know, it's about what your accomplishments make possible for others. Whenever you accomplish something, ask yourself the question, who did I help? And how did that make me feel? That's a, that's a huge thing. It's totally separate from saying, I'm so great. Look at me. Look at what I've accomplished. Who did I help? What did it make possible? What did my efforts make possible for other people? If somebody asks you accomplishment about your accomplishments, don't make it about yourself. Make it about what it made possible for others. I do this all the time in the resource room. People come to me and they say, "Well, I don't know. I mean, I've, I'm, I'm out of work, and I, and I, you know, I don't know what I've done in the past." And so I start to ask them. I say, "Well, what did you do? You know, what were the tasks involved in your past job? And you know, what did you like about it?" As soon as I start asking people, you know, so who did you serve? Who were your customers? Who were your clients? And, and so what were, what were the things that you did and, and how did you feel about helping people? As soon as I focus the attention away from themselves, about them talking about themselves, and they start to talk about other people and who they've helped, it's amazing the difference. People, I, I notice it physically. People sit up straighter. They smile. I get, they get this sort of almost dreamy look in their eyes where they say, well, you know, I had clients and... You know, I, I really enjoy it when I'm able to solve problems. I mean, just recently I had a client in here who, who said, I, I, give me the most difficult customer in the world and I will do my best to try and solve problems for them. And when he started talking about that, I could see the pride coming up and the energy returning and, and the light in his eyes. And I thought, ah, that's it. That's it. That's exactly it. That's what he should be talking about. It makes a huge difference when you take the focus away from yourself. So here, bright color, hoping this burns right into your retinas out there. Um, this is a new mindset. Every time you have to talk about your accomplishments, think of it in this way. My accomplishments help me be of greater service to others. Take a minute to say this to yourself. If you're in a private space right now and you're able to speak out loud, say it out loud. See what it feels like. I'll give you a second here. Every time... Every time you talk about your accomplishments, think of it in this way. Who did I help? How was I of service to others? So that brings up the question, well, what is tracking? What, you know, that's the topic of this, this webinar. We're here talking about achievements and accomplishments. Well, essentially, it's, it's actually quite simple. It's really about recording your work and your life accomplishments. That's what tracking is. I like to look at it in terms of scrapbooking your life. You know what scrapbooking is. A lot of people do. Basically, it's taking mementos of your past, um, photographs, uh, mementos, ticket stubs, etc., and you organize them and put them on a page. You write inspirational messages and notes. Um, they're little keywords for yourself to, to remind yourself of a special time in a particular context. Uh, it's a jumping off place for you to tell stories about your life. Well, think of accomplishment tracking for your career as exactly the same thing. Um, in the present, it's about being mindful in each moment um, and being ready to recognize moments that are useful to store away for the future. Um, in the future, it's about anticipating change and opportunities that might come. And so how does it apply to work? Well, if you track your accomplishments, things that you do on a daily basis or in the past or anticipate in the future, it helps you with planning, it helps you with monitoring and proving what you've done in life. It's all about really essentially paying attention. So here we're going to do a quick poll and I'm going to turn this back over to Marina to handle the poll. Great. So I'm just going to launch our poll here, and I'd like to encourage all of you to go ahead and vote on your screen. So we have the uh, poll question is, do you do any kind of accomplishment tracking activities? Uh, and our answers are, yes, I've done this consistently for years. No, I don't see the value. 
only when I need to find a new job or off and on, but I'm not as consistent as I want to be. So go ahead and click the answer on your screen that applies to you. And uh, Donna, did you have anything you wanted to say while we're waiting for people to vote? Um, well, not really. I'll just take, take some time to, to figure out which makes sense to you. Great. Um, you know what, we've got most people uh, voted here, so I'm just going to share those results. And it looks like we have um, most people, almost 50% off and on, but not as consistent as I want to be. And uh, the second largest group, almost 40%, only when I need to find a new job. So we have 2% um, saying, no, they don't. They don't see the value. 9%, uh, yes, they've done this consistently for years. So there you go. Well, it's pretty much what I expected, really. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's really been that case in my life, too, where, you know, um, many of us lose jobs unexpectedly, and it's pretty painful and, and really, really shocking. And then all of a sudden, you're in this panic mode where you go, oh, oh, I need to find a new job. I better dust off my resume. I need to, oh, where are my references, et cetera. So it's really not, um, it's not... Um, uh, surprising that that people only do that and then once they find the job what happens they put everything away they forget about it and they they go into their job so you know this brings up the the, the question of well who's in control anyway um, I like the analogy of a pinball machine um, you can either be the ball and you're inside the pinball machine and you get ricocheted off of various um, obstacles and you really have no uh, control over the trajectory you've got somebody else controlling which way you get um, you know uh, moved around and so you ricochet off different things and you react you hit something you bounce off of it you react you bounce into something else and sometimes life is like that you think oh what else could go wrong so in some ways though who would you rather be would you would you want to stay as that ball or do you want to be the person controlling the flippers this brings up another idea that um, I don't know if you're all familiar with this book. I read this a number of years ago, and um, it's it's by Michael Ber uh, Gerber. It's called the E Myth. This is basically about businesses, and the main tenet is, well, okay, uh, you might be, um, for example, a hairstylist, and you're an excellent technician, and you decide you want to be, um, you want to run your own show, so you go into business and you continue working as a technician. Um, in your business as a hairdresser, but you don't work on the business, and as a result, things get missed, and, and um, the businesses fail, and this is very common for small businesses. So I thought about that, and I thought, well, this is, isn't that very similar to our own lives? You know, we spend time working in our lives. We are we have, with little awareness of actually what we're doing. We go to work. We do a job. You know, once we get the job, we put our resume away, and we forget about it. Um, or you can work on your life with a kind of mindful engagement of where you are and what you're doing. Um, so essentially you can control, you know, control what you can control and roll with what you can't. So, oh, so the poll results, yeah, I know, we, we've already discussed that, but essentially, you know, when you look at, say, 50% of us are, are inconsistent with, um, you know, some of our tracking activities, um, it's because you know, it's because we've got a lot of things going on in our lives and, you know, sometimes we pay attention to things, but we don't actually do it in any consistent fashion. Um, and we're very much like that in many of our aspects of our lives. But like you say, you know, 40% um, are, are only doing it when we find a new job. And I think that's a shame because I think where there's a great opportunity for us to grow as human beings and be mindful about what we're doing in life. So why is it more important? Well, um, you know, we're able to assess the past and prepare for the future when we are more mindful of what we're doing at the moment. Um, also, you know, we get more comfortable with the unknown. If we are solid in what we know about ourselves and what we're doing in our lives now, it helps us prepare for the future. And we're, we're less scared, we're less tentative about not knowing what's going to come. And also, when you track your accomplishments and you compile and record them, it makes you feel good. So when you're feeling down or if you've lost your job or something's not going right, all you need to do is, is take a look back, back at the, your accomplishments and you think, you know what, I'm all right. I, I've done a lot of different things. Um, I, you know, this is okay. I, I, can, I can deal with this. You know, change is a given. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. Um, it, you know. As, as I show here, there's a picture of my broken arm, you know, everything was going great and then I tripped and fell on January 1st, 2013 and I snapped both bones. That is an actual x-ray of my arm. It was a lot of fun. 
my best friend is listening in here, and she knows very much how 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 derailed it it, it can it can cause for people. You know. Um, you know that said, um, resilience is a huge, huge part of our lives. You know, when you're the lever controlling pinball, you recover more quickly. You learn to anticipate. Um, when you're mindful and present, you recover more quickly from the past. And when you accept that change will happen, you can anticipate and prepare for course changes along the way. You're not going to be ricocheted off. You'll have a variety of different ways of looking at life, and you'll say, "Okay, so this didn't work." So. Um, Let's try something else. It's really up to you, and that's a really powerful place to be. So what are the kinds of things you can track? Um, well, very simply said, there's a big list here. Numbers are great to track. Your sales figures, the people that you serve, measurable outcomes, um, the number of classes you've taught, interviews you've conducted or went to, the people that you've managed. Any type of numbers are good to, to review, and sometimes it's just a matter of going through your day and ticking off or, or taking a notebook and writing down how many people that you saw. Before and after is really good. Um, any type of system that wasn't working well before that you're tracking, um, that you make some changes to, maybe you decide that you're going to organize your office. Well, take photographs of the office before or a file system before and, and, and take pictures of it afterwards, as long as you know there are no client data or anything sensitive that is to be shown. Any kind of projects that you've worked on, writing down what it is that you did in those projects. Uh, any type of accuracy ratings. Maybe you were learning to type. Um, record when you started and then practice and then record yourself again. Progressions over time is, is something that's really important because we often start a project or we start doing a, a, a task and work and we don't really realize that we've learned something over time. It's really only when we look back. Um, later on, and a lot of times we don't, even, we're not mindful of progress that we've made over time. Uh, any type of reductions in, in, in losses or augmentations in efficiency, any kind of speed-related items you can track. Educational qualifications, upgrades, uh, um, continuing education credits. Even if you take some courses online or you do some studies or read books, record all that. Talk about, I mean. The, the wealth of information on the internet is incredible. Take some time to learn some things and write down what it is you learned. Any examples of your writing, speaking, presentations? Maybe you sent a, you know, a really great email to somebody. Um, awards and testimonials, thank you cards that people send you. Photos of you working or finishing a race. Well, that's a huge accomplishment. Um, any kind of performance reviews? You want to keep those, review them, um, and put them into your portfolio. Any sort of mind map, vision boards, brainstorming, or lists? I'm a big list maker. I usually create very detailed lists, and it, I find it very satisfying to cross things off lists. And I keep the lists because it reminds me of just how far I've come over a period of time. Another thing you can track are your feelings and your energy levels. How did you feel when you finished a project? Maybe you felt drained. Well, you want to track that, and, and that will help you plan for the future. Well, maybe you don't want to do that project because of the way you felt at the end of it. You can also do it backwards. You can say, how do I want to feel? Just like Danielle Laporte from the Firestarter sessions, she's fabulous. She talks about, you know, how do you want to feel? And make the decisions that will take you to the way you want to feel. Uh, one quick thing about permission, you've got to check with your company's confidentiality agreements. You don't want to be tracking data, et cetera, that you're not allowed to keep, um, who owns any of the documents or data or the results, uh, any kind of client confidentiality. You want to just make sure that in your workplace um, that you're able you know, find out um, what it is you can keep and what you can't. Um, this is also an opportunity for anybody out here um, who is a leader or runs a team. You know, uh, it's always a great thing to help build um, uh, team team work. In that, uh, people, you know, when you encourage your staff to track their accomplishments, you actually build a stronger team, and, and you're able to see where the gaps are. Um, now, just one word of caution, though. If you start saying, you know, I want, I want this data, I want that data, what can I keep? It, it may trigger your employer to think, you know, why are you collecting this data? Um, are you looking for a different job, etc.? It's just I wanted to bring that up because what you could say to people is, no, I'm just building a career portfolio, and I think it's an ongoing activity that I like to to do. Is there is there activities or is there data that I can then use, you know, based on the input that I've made in the company? 
So how do we do it? Okay, well, there, I would say there's five sort of basic ways. You can either um, use a dedicated notebook or file or binder, et cetera, to record activities. You can use the computer. Cloud sharing formats are great. You can um, connect them to a lot of different devices. Productivity software and digital portfolios are becoming more popular every day. Um, you can use apps on the phone. Um, and, you know, your camera or video recorder on your telephone is a great device. And one of the things that I really enjoy doing is also recording myself speaking. So let's go through each one. Um, you know, I, I, put this, <laughs> I put this in there because for many of us, you know, we sit in front of the computer all day and you think, ugh, you know, I, what, one more, one more program I have to learn? Are you kidding me? So, you know, I'm a big fan of using day timers, notebooks, and binders. I think one of the advantages is that uh, if you're not really that tech savvy, all you need is a piece of paper and a pencil. Um, you know, it's easy to use. You don't rely on electricity or internet connectivity. It's portable. It's also a creative outlet for you. So, you know, what I do is I, I, I like to organize it in terms of the date and what I did and who I helped and what the results were. And the results could also be how I felt at the end of the project. And this is something that you can do anywhere and any time. I guess one of the advantages of, or disadvantages is that, you know, it can be damaged or bulky. You know, you don't want to lose it. Uh, it might have sensitive information. Um, and, you know, one of the things you can do is make copies of the originals, especially if you have any valuable documents that you're sharing and you, just like any kind of valuable document, you might want to store it in multiple locations. Um, I also like to photograph pages of things if I don't want to have paper copies elsewhere. Um, computer files are great. Uh, it's professional looking or because of cloud-based storage. You can access the information anywhere you have the internet connection. Um, it can be easier to upload to something like LinkedIn or be a part of a, an online portfolio. And you can incorporate some of the things that you've done into PowerPoint presentations in some, some fashion in case you need to use it in the future. Um, obviously, one of the disadvantages, very, very minor, but you do need uh, a computer and electricity and internet connection. Um, and sometimes it can kind of feel counterintuitive. It can be, it can feel cold and inflexible. You know, as an artist, I like to have things spread out all around me and I like to be able to, for me to see things out in front of me, I'm able to make connections better than if I see one file and close it and open another file. Um, one thing I would do is to try and store things in multiple locations. Flash drives are great for transferring documents, but I wouldn't rely on them for storing really sensitive data and only on sense, you know, only flash drives because they do fail. Um, you can email yourself. Um, I would not store personal data on work computers. If you should ever lose a job and you get locked out of your computer, you may not, you may lose very valuable personal data. So really it's up to you to, to make sure that you save things on uh, personal data as long as you're allowed to do that. Um, one thing I like to use a lot of is Google Drive. Google Drive is great because you can create presentations, you can email, and you can create documents all in Google Drive. Um, Evernote is another productivity app that is very popular for people. It's not so much about accomplishment tracking, but it does help you stay organized and you can set um, schedules for yourself for when you want to review the work that you've done. Um, one of the things I like to do with Google Drive is I will create folders based on project names or goals, uh, a task list, um, any kind of results or reflections. Um, one thing to do is also who you worked with and their contact info. I like to keep that into um, project files as well because in the future I may look back and think, okay, so maybe I want to do something in the future or I need to find a new job. Oh yeah, who was that person I worked with? I, I should start networking. Who was that person? So when I actually compile and I, and I create a file, I like to have the people's contact names in there because you forget, right? And you think, okay, well, I have someone's business card. Who were they again? Sometimes, I mean, LinkedIn is making it a little easier to do that, but I like to have it all compiled into one little area, like a folder. Um, you know, and you can you can design the folders whatever you want, projects or based company based or in presentations. Sometimes people want to put all of the presentations they've done for lots of different companies in one folder, or they think, oh, okay, well maybe I need to do it for one particular company or one particular client. It really is up to you and your your unique situation. Apps, um, well, a lot of us, um, you know, we go everywhere with our phones and productivity apps can be right on our phones or our iPads. 
it can help keep you um, mindful and organized. One of the things I love about my phone is that I can set reminders on my phone. It, and you know, if you are inconsistent, like many people are, a lot of times you have to actually schedule it in. So do that. Put that on your phone and say, you know, remind yourself that on a Friday afternoon or whatever it is, you're going to take time to review your week or your month and schedule that into, into your uh, life just as a quick reminder, otherwise we'll forget. Essentially, more systems aren't better, right? You just want to use the system. And the best system that is the one that you actually end up using. Um, you know, one of the disadvantages of all these different programs is that um, if you're like me, there's just yet another password you have to remember. Um, you know, you could also spend a lot of time learning how do these different systems work and you might not really want to take the time to figure out yet another app or another program. You know, so if you do want to look into these, look for free apps first. Don't make a lot of money commitment in these because it might not work for you. And check into password management software, something like LastPass 4.0. There's lots of different ones out there. So if you have any favorite programs or app, apps, write them down and, and send them to the moderator and we can compile a list later. Um, and if there's something that you really love, I would love to hear from you and, and have you share that. Um, one thing that's kind of fun to do is to record yourself uh, on a smartphone or a recording device. Um, a lot of times it's easier than writing and you can do it when it's fresh in your mind. So maybe you just finished something and you feel really good about it. Take a minute, record yourself say, talking about what it was that you did and how you felt about it. Um, this can help you prepare for interviews, especially things like uh, behavioral interview questions where someone says, oh, tell me about a time when you um, accomplished something at your last job or, or anything like that. Um, one of the disadvantages of recording your voice is that you can be wordy and, and you might not follow an established format. If you talk too long, um, you will you have to listen through the whole thing to figure, you know, find the nuggets of information. So, you know, my suggestion is that you follow a format. You keep it short, maybe no more than one or two minutes, and use the same format every time that you do it. Um, you know, also to just make sure if you're doing any kind of videotaping or recording, there are other people in it and there are other people listening. You need to get their written permission before you're able to use any of these. So how often do you do this? Well, your industry or your job will determine when and what and how you track. Basically, you can, um, you can organize it in terms of end dates of projects, start dates of projects any kind of progress reports. Um, you might be able to do a daily five-minute recap on your day, um, crossing things off lists. Um, you know, there's all kinds of uh, different timings in terms of how often you should do it, and you will know. And I think this is why some people are con inconsistent, because maybe uh, there's a pretty much of a routine that they have on a daily basis, so they don't really know what it is to track. But as you look through some of the different items that you can track, you'll start to realize, well, hang on a second. Maybe if I do this once a month, it will be, be enough, or maybe I need to review this every week because things change so quickly. So uh, check it out. You know, you, you Try a few different um, schedules, and you'll see very quickly whether that schedule is going to work for you. So where do you start? Well, you know, if you're unemployed, you might want to be looking into the past, obviously, because um, you don't have anything in the future right at the moment. If you're employed, start where exactly where you're at on a daily basis. If you're a student, you might want to look at current projects, assignments, um, volunteer opportunities, etc. <clears throat> I, I want to add the concept of life experience, too, because um, you know, some of us have gaps in our work history, and we take time off. Um, and also, you know, looking for the future, anticipating and set, setting up uh, opportunities for yourself. So if you're unemployed, you know, time is really of the essence. You want to retrieve as much work data as you possibly can that would benefit you or ask that it be sent to you. For example, if you leave and you want sales figures sent to you and you haven't recorded them, ask for them. Um, you want to list all of the tasks you did in your last job, breaking them down into who you helped and what exactly you did. You want to get your references together and keep in touch with those people over time. This is all part of this whole networking concept. Um, update your social media profile, especially on LinkedIn, and stay connected with people. That's more, more and more when I see people, see people coming into the resource room. 
um, I find that they really gain a lot of strength when they reconnect and they stay connected with people here in the resource room and people from their past as well. Um, you want to maybe start picking apart some of your past work history. This is what I do with people every day in, in reviewing their um, resumes, right? They, I say, so what did you do? Um, what, list all the tasks that you did in previous jobs. And then you can start to kind of identify, well, okay, what, what, how many people did I see in that job? And that's where you start um, being able to track things. Look for opportunities to upgrade. There's lots of free online sites, lynda.com. Um, here in Vancouver, if you have a Vancouver Public Library card, you can actually sign up for lynda.com for free. And allison.com is also another uh, site where you can do lots of upgrades for free. It's, they're fabulous websites. You want to gather up any of your materials and proof of past work um, and update your uh, portfolio, your career portfolio. I wrote an article on developing a career portfolio and it is on the Charity Village website. So I highly recommend reading that too because that will give you some other specific details on how to create a portfolio. And also visit an employment services center. Try and connect up with a case manager. Take some workshops. Um, if you're employed now, you want to list all the tasks you do in your work right at the moment, including the things that aren't in your job description. We all take on other tasks that aren't in our job description, and those are valuable to track as well. That shows that you are committed and willing to do other things besides what is exactly in your job description. Again, you want to break down into individual skills and, um, and the skills that you used to accomplish each task, and again, who did you help in the process? Um, you want to try and just pick a method and learn from it and adjust as you go along. If you're a student, you want to monitor all the participation in group and team projects. You want to track any leadership or support roles, any kind of tutoring or assisting or others, um, volunteer uh, experience where you might be able to use, uh, learn useful skills. Uh, you want to also get to know your professors and stay connected with them. There can be a huge resource for you later on as well. Get involved in campus and learn how to study and how to organize yourself. The more you learn in terms of systems that you develop now, can de you can develop lifelong habits that will really, really, really help you in the future. And there's me <laughs> when I was trying to be Jacques Cousteau. Um, uh, you know, and we have life experiences. Sometimes you're not working for pay. Maybe you're raising a family, you're taking care of somebody, you're traveling. Think about all the things that you've done in life, and you can do the same thing. What did I do in life? Track those things down. Write everything down and say, well, what exactly did I do? What tasks did I use? Or what skills did I use in accomplishing all of those different things? Those are valuable, and they're useful. They're, they're transferable skills that you can use to support yourself in conjunction with paid work. So, okay, so you've done all this stuff. What do you do with it? Well, you use all the data to create new resumes, to prepare for performance reviews, prepare for interviews, ask for raises and promotions to justify funding. You can also use it to build stronger and more engaged teams. You update your job descriptions or manuals or systems, or even just reminding yourself of how awesome you are and wonderful you are. Um, you know, think about other benefits of how you can um, do tracking. You build a career portfolio. There's a link down at the bottom, and then you'll be able to um, check with us later on. Um, you know, you can have a paper portfolio or a digital portfolio as well. So you're all thinking, okay, great, this is wonderful, but I had I don't have any time. Honestly, I'm so busy. I just I just can't add one more thing into my life. Yeah, okay. So Lao Tzu says it again. Time is a created thing. To say I don't have time is like saying I don't want to. Essentially, you know what we do, we do have the time. We find the time to do the things that we really want. Reality check here. How many times do you check your cell phone in a day? How many times do you text people? How much time do you spend wasted on streaming television, um, you know, where we're, uh, we're watching a particular TV show and we watch, you know, four seasons at a time? We have the time. It's really just a matter of where you want to spend your time. So quick poll number uh, two here. If you're willing to give tracking a try, which method are you drawn to most? So uh, Marina, you want to take over? Sure, sounds great. So I've just launched this poll for everyone. Um, which uh, method are you drawn to most? We have notebook or binder, computer files, smartphone apps, video, audio, photography. So go ahead and vote for the one that interests you the most and uh, click on your screen. Well, uh, while we're doing that, I just want to run down. We had a few people suggest some um, 
apps uh, that they find useful. So we had uh, a couple of people mention Evernote. We had someone mention uh, something called Quest, Level Up Your Life. Uh, Microsoft Outlook for keeping appointments, checklists, tasks. Um, we've got another one for Asana and Wonderlist and uh, one called jibberjobber.com. So uh, there's some uh, ideas for all of you to look up as well if you're interested. And it looks like we've got most people voted now, so I'm going to close and share this poll. It looks like we have, uh, most people are interested in computer files, 47%. We've got 37% notebook or binder, so going the old school route. Um, and then 13% smartphone app and 3% uh, video audio photography. Wow, amazing. That's really cool. Great, thank you so much for suggesting some apps. You know, I'm not a huge app user. I'm, a, I'm definitely a paper girl. Um, but I also like, because I do a lot of writing, I do like computer files. So, you know, I'm kind of right uh, on there with many of you. But, um, you know, apps can be very helpful for people who are really tech savvy and really like to keep, um, you know, keep things simple and not, uh, not have lots of paper around them. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. I'm sure we could probably write down some of those and, and include that in a little file for, um, you know, just to upload onto the, um, the, uh, the website, uh, Charity Village, um, for, for later access. So great. Thank you so much for that. So, you know, what does this all mean, ultimately? Um, you know, change happens. Um, and we can either deny it try to avoid the change, but it's going to happen anyway. So essentially being mindful and, and uh, aware of, of our, our present surroundings and what we're actually doing in life right at the moment, it helps us create resilience for ourselves and it helps us create a plan so that, you know, if something should happen and change, you don't have to just, you, you, you can get through the issue that you're going through now knowing that you have a body of work and accomplishments that you have maintained over a lifetime and that is there to support you along the way. So you don't have to start from scratch in creating a resume and you're not going to be ricocheting off you know, walls in the pinball machine. You have some control over this. Um, and it, you, know, you have some control over what's going to happen to you in the future, right? It's also quite satisfying and it feels good. When you review a list that you've, you've accomplished, don't you feel good? Don't you think, you know, oh, if you say, oh, what did you do this weekend? And you think, oh, well, I didn't do very much. And then you actually make a list of all the things you've done. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a reminder of, yes, in fact, you are doing a lot of different things. You know, um, and also tracking I find for me personally, I don't know for, for anyone else, but it, it kind of helps me reduce regret because I am reminded of the things that I have done uh, in the past and it also helps with worry and anxiety in the future. Uh, knowing that I have this body of work that I've accomplished and that I can apply that in the future, that if something should change and when something changes, I don't worry about it as much. I, I will have the opportunity to to build something new because I know what I've done already. And in some ways, you know, it's not really about doing more. It's more recognizing what you did in the past, what you are doing at this very moment, and, and what you can do um, in the future and for others. So again, that mindset of my accomplishments help me be of greater service to others. So remember, you know, life isn't about how fast you run or how high you climb, but how well you bounce. I like that. Actually, I think it was originally a, a picture of Tigger. Um, but it's also how you pay attention to the present moment. That's really the key. So here are a couple of the links, um, various sites that you can participate. I mean, WorkBC, obviously the uh, WorkBC centers here are only in BC. Uh, maybe your province or territory has some employment services centers, but the WorkBC site also has some really interesting um, labor market information and it's highly, you know, I recommend going and visiting it because it, it can give you lots of information about um, various careers in labor market and things that are happening, um, not just in BC, but in general. Um, I also write a blog for the YWCA Vancouver website, so if you go to that site, you'll see, um, you know, and enter that, you'll see all my blog posts, but there are uh, quite a few people who write blog posts and other blog posts. One of my colleagues, Tina, she writes blog posts as well, and 
you know, some really, really interesting articles on employment, but also about personal care and about families. So I highly recommend that you visit the, uh, the website, um, ywcavan.org, and there's lots of interesting information there. I'm sure lots of YWCAs around uh, Canada. And, and Charity Village also runs, uh, has quite a few articles online, so I definitely um, encourage you to go and visit their website too. Um, Evernote and Google.com will provide you some information on the apps and, and their programs. And then there's that Lynda.com and Allison.com websites for free, uh, free courses. Um, there are other, other programs like our other web websites like Udemy, um, but a lot of those you have to pay for as well. And then um, there's my email address. You know, if anyone has a particular question, I encourage you to reach out. I'll try my best to, to email back to everybody um, or send sort of a bulk email to Charity Village and maybe they'll be able to, um, you know, if there's some questions that are really common. Um, but yeah, feel free to uh, send, shoot me an email, you know, I'd be happy to respond um, if there's any particular questions that you have. And just at the end here is a beautiful picture looking west in, on the West Vancouver seawall at sunset. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to remind you that, you know, new beginnings are often disguised as painful endings. So sometimes when things really, really horrible happen and we're right in the midst of pain and suffering, um, you know, having tracked your career and your life accomplishments, it, it, it doesn't necessarily reduce the suffering and the pain that we feel in the moment. But as we gain a bit of perspective, it can show and illuminate a new path in front of us. So I just wanted to remind that to you and that um, you know it's a cycle and that, that change is going to happen and to, to embrace it. So here we are at the end of the, uh, the webinar and I want to open this up for any potential questions that you might have had. Um, so Marina, do you have any questions that people have okay. asked? Great, yes, uh, we have quite a few questions that have come in and if uh, now is the time if you have questions uh, be sure to type them in and we'll, we will do our best to get to them. Um, so first of all we have uh, a question about how far you should go back when you're talking about accomplishments either on your resume or in a job interview. It, it, historically, you know, do you, do you have a time limit generally on, on how far you might want to go back when you're talking about those things? Well, it, that's an excellent question. It's one that I do field quite frequently um, in my work. Um, having my, myself having had um, gaps in my uh, career progression, um, I, you know, I've dealt with that as well. In that, I finished my master's about ten years ago, and I didn't I actually did something else. I ended up running my own business and something completely unrelated. But recently, have decided to come back into the field of counseling, and you know, that, that question I thought, well, okay, so when did I have most of my counseling experience? And a lot of that was related to my internship. So I would always really focus on what is it that you're trying to do now? And now if, if you have uh, a job that you're trying to um, apply for and a lot of your experience is a lot older, you may want to consider looking back on those skills and ask yourself, well, how have those skills that I learned many, many years ago, it could be 10 years plus, do I still use those skills? Have I actually, uh, you know, just learned those skills and then let them go? Usually not. Usually you can connect some of those skills and things that you've done way in the past with something that you're doing now. So ask yourself, how have those skills or how did those skills that I learned or the things that I've accomplished way in the past inform my life at this very moment? And how is that connected to a job that I might want to have in the future? Um, I, I hesitate to use really old, uh, you know, so say it's 2016 and maybe in 2002 you, you had a job doing something. If that job is not related to what you're hoping to do now, then you may want to consider leaving it out. But if it has specific skills, and this is why doing, a, say, a resume that is a functional or combination functional chronological resume can be really helpful because you can pick out some of the skills that you used way back when and, and put them into a functional um, uh, resume. So, for example, so maybe, you know, I did my counseling experience or internship you know, in 2004, so in a functional combined resume, I might be able to say counseling skills and then I'll, I'll write, you know, worked for two years and as, as an intern at this clinic. Well, I did it. I, nobody can take that away from me, 
right? So I think it's useful to add that in there. Does I hope that helps. I'm that's not giving great. you a specific. I, I'm not giving you a specific time because that, that's a really hard question. I mean, I I don't like to say, well, you can't put anything that's you know 10 years or older. As no, current I, I as think it can I, be. I think that clarifies really well. I, I think there's no real hard and fast rule that that you can go on with that, but I, I think that helps clarify um, you know when when you might go back and and when you might not. So that's sure. wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so here's another really good question. How do you balance? Um, you know, one of the things you talked about with talking about we, we accomplished this and we accomplished that. How do you balance that when you are looking for work and you kind of do need to stress that you have the skills and it, it is more about you as opposed to about we? Um, you know, the, the person who put in this question suggested that, you know, job search consultants themselves will stress that perhaps referring to we can sometimes, um, you know, denigrate your accomplishment a little bit. Do you sort of have to balance that out when you're actually in an active job search? Absolutely, but here's the way I look at it. Um, a lot of job postings, um, you know, the standard thing they say is ability to work in teams and independently. So in answering that question, what I might say is, um, when I worked at this company, I worked in a team to, um, do this project and this was my part in the project. There were many people in the team but this was the part that I was responsible for. So I think it's 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 important that you are you ride that line carefully like between the two. You can actually you want to be able to say that you're able able of working in a team. But I always try to look at what the fear is behind the question. And the fear to me is um, you know, are you a collaborator? Will you listen to the team? Or are you kind of a rogue worker where you, regardless of what the team wants, um, are you going to do your own thing and not listen to anybody? So I think it's important that you do mention teamwork if there's teamwork involved. But again, a part of it is, okay, so this is what I did in the team. I collaborated, I listened, I participated by offering suggestions, I um, I judged a variety of different um, potential projects and then I voted. Um, so that's all demonstrating your ability to work in a team and that's valuable when you are in a job interview. But at the same time, people also want to know that, okay, so you're working in a team, you collaborate, but at one point you have a job task that you've got to do and you've got to take it away and accomplish it. So then you need to go back and say, okay, so this is what I did in the team and we all collaborated. However, this was my part in it and this is how I actually, these are the steps that I took, uh, the tasks that I completed and, and able to, um, to actually finish that task. So you're basically answering both those questions without um, sort of denigrating yourself. Wonderful. Um, and here's a question. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to read this out, actually, because I think it's something that many participants might uh, find themselves in a similar situation. So um, this webinar participant says, I'm 57 and I'm currently unemployed. I feel that I have a limited awareness of my skills. Um, I've always done the job as required. Uh, she says she's had you know, lots of praise in, in her job, um, but she's wondering, how do I start this process? Well, to me, the easiest way of starting is to make a list of the jobs that you've had or the life activities that you've experienced and then just ask yourself, okay, break it down. In this job, what did I do every single day? And for some people, it just it, it takes a while for you to get into that mode, you know, because people go, well, I just went there. Well, clearly, if you spent eight hours a day in a, in a job, you did something while you were there. That's where to start. What did I do? I walked in the door, I cleaned the kitchen because nobody else does. Okay, I, um, I tidy the office, I open up, uh, turn on the machines, I check the faxes, I make coffee for the staff. Even right down to the minutia of the tasks that you did from morning till night. Um, if you have a hard time thinking in terms of a job in particular, or maybe you've forgotten and you need to sort of kickstart yourself into doing this, then um, use your present moment. Just say to yourself, what did I do today? I got up, I got dressed, I took out the garbage, I sorted the mail, I, you know, and you can do that within your present moment to kind of get into the habit of 
listing the verbs, the tasks, the individual activities that you did in the past tense. I did this, I did that. That's a really great place to start. And actually, I have uh, an article on um, the YWCA Van website um, called Creating Resumes if you have a diverse work experience. And, and that goes into um, more specifically how to go about breaking things down. Okay, so that, that's where I would get her to start. Wonderful. That's great. Um, and uh, here's a, a, an interesting question. This person is working in an environment where the work is ongoing. Milestones and deliverables aren't really going to be achieved for maybe a couple of years down the line. Um, what's the best way for this person to track the achievements as their work is ongoing? Depends on how many projects they have and what kind of monitoring they're required to do in each project. Um, for for many people, uh, long-term projects, you know, they start it, they launch it, and then other people have lots of um, lots of input. Maybe their input is minimal, uh, but but clearly they're there every day. So what are they actually doing every single day when they're in, they walk in the door? Um, it's not tracking doesn't necessarily need to be specifically on one project. But what do you do every day? You know, how many emails do you send to people? How do you connect with people? Do you progress reports from people along the way. Um, you know, without knowing the specifics of this person's job, it's really hard for me to, to say exactly. They might want to shoot me an email and I'm, I'm happy to answer it when I can. Um, but really, I mean, you're, you're there for eight hours, so what are you doing every day? That, that would be my question to them to, to try and get a little bit more information. That's great. And I'm sure there's probably, even though the deliverables might not be available for a couple of years, there's probably, uh, you know, chunks that, you know, you, you do finish up, you do uh, accomplish things, even if it's internally. Um, so I'm, I'm sure uh, there, there are things there that, like you say, can, can be looked at. Um, I know we've had a couple other questions from, from folks asking about their uh, specific jobs and situations, and I think uh, Dennis' point about um, going back to what do you do every day will probably get you thinking um, ab about that. So we'll probably answer a, a lot of those questions. Um, I'd like to just finish up uh, with one last question. Um, we have some students uh, participating today, and you know we've had a few questions come in about uh, students that maybe don't have a lot of work experience yet. Do you have any tips for them on, on what they might be compiling as achievements? Yeah, it's something that, uh, you know, when I covered that with that one slide on, on the students, um, I think students have a tremendous opportunity to volunteer their time. Um, I know that school can be a really fun and social place to be, but it's also a wonderful opportunity for you to get involved um, with uh, clubs or initiatives or areas of work, especially if you're, for example, going to be um, um, doing any kind of co-op work, uh, you want to start reaching out to uh, companies where you might be interested in and, and seeing what kind of, um, you know, doing your research to seeing what things are coming up for certain companies um, and on campus especially. I'm sure there are always people that need help on campus, um, people who need tutoring if you have a particular skill that you can offer them. But not only that, connecting up with your um, with your uh, aides and also with your professors to see if there's any research that's being done that you can assist with. You know, usually they have PhD students helping them with research, but there is also often opportunities available for tutoring, um, on, you know, undergrads or um, also participating in any kind of um, um, charity events that are happening on campus. Uh, it, it really depends on what you're interested in, but definitely looking for opportunities to volunteer your time. And also, you know, if there's a skill that you think that you might need in the future, look for opportunities to actually learn those things and volunteer, because volunteering is a perfect time to actually learn skills. Um, a lot of people volunteer because they, um, they have a skill that they they already have that they can offer to people. My suggestion is look for the things that you're uncomfortable doing and see how much you can learn in the process. So definitely volunteering and tutoring um, is something that I would I would suggest. And you know it doesn't matter that you don't have paid work experience. Life is really yeah, um, you know will provide you the opportunities uh, to give. There's always somebody that needs help. 
Great. Well, I want to thank you again, Donna, for a wonderful presentation. Um, lots of really great and motivating information there, and, and I thank you for that. Um, before we sign off today, I do want to remind everyone we are going to follow up with you by email with the webinar recording uh, and the presentation slides. We'll do our best to include the couple of um, uh, articles that Donna mentioned as well in there so you can take a closer look at those. Uh, we're also going to have a link to a very short survey. If you can take five minutes to fill that out, it would be really helpful for us and that helps us to further refine our webinar content delivery and you will have an opportunity there to let us know if there's other topics you'd like to see covered in a future session. So I want to thank you all again for joining us today and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks very much. Thanks so much.